Okay. I mean, you know, usually this is the part where I'd be like, have you ever had a water? You know, it's like, just like, come on, man. Just jump into the content. Hey, today, I am so excited because we have a very special guest. He's been on Leadership Lean In before, but it is an honor to have him back. He passes a Uh, a a little church in Dallas, Texas called Gateway Church. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The one and only author of The Blessed Life and his brand new book, Dream to Destiny. None other than Pastor Robert Morris is on today's pod. And uh, it's a big, big deal to me. Someone that I admire, someone that I look up to, someone that I've tried to model uh, my life and leadership after and has made a tremendous impact on my life. So let's lean in today and take as many notes as possible, get everything we get out of this podcast possible from none other than, come on, go crazy. If you're in your car, just tap the steering wheel. If you're on a run, just run a little faster. If you're in your house on the on the plasma, you can clap. Come on, make some noise. Pastor Robert Morris on the podcast today. Let's go, Leadership Lean In. Great to see you, Pastor Robert. It's great to see you, Chad. I'm glad to be here. And now the last time we recorded an episode together, we were in person. And I think that we need to make that happen more frequently. I think I I feel called to Dallas to come hang out with you and be around you more. I agree with that. Last time you actually flew in here, like you said, to Dallas. And uh, we need some... Dallas Tex-Mex, or we need some Dallas barbecue next time you come, one or the other. Okay, now, speaking of Dallas, it's football season. We're just jumping in. First game this week. Do I have any prophetic predictions for the Cowboys this year? (laughs) Uh, No, but I might have some pathetic predictions (laughs) for the Cowboys. So so don't don't get my hopes up. I get my hopes up every year. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, I, let me see if I could do the math here. I guess it's been 27 or 28 years of dashed hopes for the Dallas Cowboys. So please, uh, if there's anything you could pray about, pray about the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. They need the, they need a blessing on them, that's for sure. What's crazy is I remember growing up, these were the guys. I mean, three times Super Bowl champion. So I thought my whole life was going to be Emmett, Troy, oh, yeah. and the boys, but We'll see if this is the year. Yeah. I do tell you, from uh, Los Angeles, I grew up in Seattle, live in L.A. now. It's been constant entertainment for the last 20-something years for us. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, been amazing. When I grew up, uh, they were called America's Team. And uh, so it was amazing. And I actually, uh, the owner back then, I used to teach Bible studies in his home, and uh, he told me the way it got called America's Team is that they took – the, uh, they added up all the merchandising stuff that was sold for the Cowboys. They added up every other football team and doubled it, and the Cowboys sold more. So My it's goodness. just a little bit of Cowboys yeah. trivia, but it's it's not that way anymore, unfortunately. So yeah, we'll 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 see where the Lord leads. But we're we're on to bigger and better things. Hey, congratulations! That's this right. new book. I'm so I'm so excited for you. Um, obviously, Pastor Robert, your your ministry. Uh, your messages, your life, uh, the standard. You really are the standard. Uh, like Paul tells Timothy, you're the standard for me in so many ways, in so many areas. I've just looked at, to you as, um, you know, what I aspire to be, values, lifestyle, messaging, the, the Bible teacher that you are. And I'm not, I'm not just saying that. Um, I just absolutely love who you are and the way that you minister. So I'm excited about this new book. Talk to me. How did this one come to be? I love to hear the Genesis story about books. Okay, I'll do it. So this is actually a re-release of my second book. My first book, obviously, was The Blessed Life. And um, my, this book came to be because I was going to speak to our young adults. And they were uh, 18 to 29. And we actually, unfortunately, had to set the 29 because we had some... 35-year-olds in there that were men that were kind of cruising for wives, you know, type deal. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so we said when we said our young adults, and we were a small church back then, I mean, really, really small, 
And so we said, this is 18 to 29 year olds. So I'm driving down the road thinking 18 to 29, 18 to 29. What do I say to 18 to 29 year olds? And immediately I, the Lord spoke to me, Joseph was 17 when he received a dream that was from God. And he was 30 when he stepped into his destiny. And I just immediately then thought about character tests that he had to go through from his dream to fulfilling his destiny. And I thought about immediately, I thought about the pride test, you know, wow. because he got the dream and he bragged about it. I thought about the purity test then, uh, uh, you know, with uh, Potiphar's wife coming after him. Um, right. I thought about the pit test, his brother throwing him in the pit. I started, I thought about the pardon test where he had to forgive. I just started thinking about, and of course I think in alliteration because I'm a, um, you know, that's, I'm an old school preacher. So, um, <laughs> but anyway, that's how this, this, this book came about and it became a bestseller. And then a couple of years ago, I started thinking, I've got to renew that book because I have a burden for yes. this. Uh, you know, 18 to 29 year old age group. I love that. Now you, in the, in the book, you talk about these 10 tests and you've got to pass these to get into your destiny for you. What, what has been for you, the one that you go, I've really had to apply myself more than others. Maybe some of these tests are a little bit easier uh, than, than others for, for certain people. For you, what would you say, man, I've, I've had to really apply myself for this one. Uh, well, uh, unfortunately all 10, but <laughs> I, I would, if I had to narrow, I, if I had to narrow it down, I would say the pride test has always been difficult for me. And the reason the pride test has always been difficult is because it's really insecurity. And what I realized was the root of my pride, which I talk about in the book was my insecurity. In other words, one moment I would feel like the worst person in the room. So I would try to build myself up to be a better person in the room. And, um, and the purity test was very difficult for me because I was very impure as a teenager. Um, so you just look at all these tests and, and let me say something too. It's not just to step in to our destiny, it's to mm. fulfill our destiny. Because wow. these tests continued. Some of these tests, if you remember, it was, uh, there were seven good years and then uh, um, seven bad years and it was five years into the bad years. So 12 years after Joseph stepped into uh, his destiny, his brothers came to see him and he took the pardon test. In other words, would he forgive the people who did a wrong to him that actually caused some really bad things in his life to happen? Wow, that is so powerful. Now, you write a book like this and, and the message, the burden is so strong. When you're writing a book like this and even the 10 tests, the, the, the power that's in those 10 tests and the truths that lay within those, when when you write a book like this, what would you say? Here's one takeaway I really need every reader to have. Here's one, you know one or two that you go, you gotta get these. These are the ones that could really alter the course of your life. Well, here's the the takeaway to me is the overall theme of the book, and that is that mm. God gave Joseph the dream at seventeen. Mm. And he interpreted it as his brothers bowing down to him. But the dream was actually about him having influence that could help a lot of people. And yet God knew he had pride in his life. So why would God give him that dream of, of the bowing down? Why would God give him that? Because he knew he would brag about it. You know, he knew <laughs> that Joseph knew he was the favorite son. And he knew, God knew he had to work pride out of his life so that one day he would be the humble leader that he needed to be. So the takeaway really is that every person needs to know mm. that he or she has a dream uh, that it's from God. It's actually from God. That's right. And we have a destiny, yes, we have a destiny to fulfill that's actually from God. And that destiny is not about us becoming something for our own benefit, but it's about us fulfilling God's will for others. In other words, we can help people. The reason that God has given you so much influence in Los Angeles is not so people know the name of Chad Veach, but so you can help people. So he's going right. to continue to give you 
tremendous influence. It's one of the things when I had the leaders come to my, you know, come to this area and talk, and you and, and, and I talked to them about influence, and you were one of those, you know, that I saw as a national leader. And, uh, and I was saying, if you remember, God's going to give you great influence, but that influence isn't so everyone knows Chad Veach's name. That influence right. is so that you can reach more people. And mm -hmm. so that's the way it is for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're in the medical profession or if you're in the construction profession or if you're in the education profession. It doesn't matter what you do. God wants to give you influence so that you can reach more people. And he, wow. there is a dream, and it's from God, and there is a destiny, and it is from God. Mm. But these character tests have to be passed for us wow. to fulfill our destiny. Beautiful, beautiful. So powerful. There's so much truth right there. You talk about it in the book, and I want you to unpack it a little bit for us because I think there, it, it's so true. You talk about how no one can derail your destiny but you. And jo Joseph is living proof of this. Talk to me a little bit about this truth, because I think that right there, one of the, one of the thoughts I've always kind of held to is never give anyone control over the narrative over your life. And I love that about Joseph. He didn't, he didn't let his brothers control the narrative. He, he, it was always a him and God issue. How, talk to me about this truth. Yeah. yeah, so you think about it, when, when Joseph's brothers sold him, uh, he ends up in Egypt, which was the most powerful nation in the world. So th even that horrible act of them selling him into slavery was to put him in the nation where he could one day be the second in command and affect the whole world. And then you've got Potiphar's wife falsely accusing him. He was falsely accused. He was innocent of the charges, and he goes to prison. Yet in prison is where he interprets the dreams of the butler and the baker, which get him before Pharaoh, which again puts him in the place to fulfill his destiny. So what I want people to realize is that people have done wrong things to you. People have said lies about you. That cannot stop your destiny. Mm. As Joseph himself even said, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. That's right. That's right. And I think that sometimes we give uh, to people too much power and we, and we make it about them. We do. How, how have you had to work through forgiveness? I think that's, that's such a big part of this too, is forgiving those that have falsely accused you, those that have wronged you. I think that getting, getting into that trap of unforgiveness, how, how do we work through the forgiveness issue? I mean, you've been in the ministry for how many years? You, you've you know, preached all over the world. You lead one of the greatest churches that the world has ever seen. All that tells me is that you've been around a lot of mess because where there are no oxen, the trough yeah. is clean. When you're dealing in a world of your size, yeah. there's a ton of opportunity for offense. How have you been able to forgive yeah. those that have hurt you? Yeah, well, I feel like that the, the uh, first thing was when God showed me that he really is in control and that no one else is in control of my life except God. And so even when people did things that were wrong, lied about me, said things, I, I just had a knowing in my heart that if I did the right thing, God would take care of it. That somehow it might be uh, a few months, but it might be a few years, it might be 20 years. At some point, people were going to look back and say, you know what? Um, he must have been not in the wrong back then because otherwise God wouldn't have blessed him and given him this much influence if he wow. had somehow been in the wrong. And so that was part of it. But the second part of it was I had Dr. R.T. Kendall uh, come and preach. And uh, Dr. Kendall, you know, is a great man of God, uh, pastored Westminster Chapel for 25 years in London, turned it around from, you know, kind of a dead downtown church to a thriving, spirit-filled, powerful, you know, uh, international church. Wow. And he talked about forgiveness. And one of the things he said was, if you're not praying for your, the people who've done you wrong to be blessed, then you haven't truly forgiven wow. them. Wow. 
And I remember thinking, you know, I brought you here to minister to the people in the congregation, you know, not to me. You know? <laughs> and so, so my, my wife and I uh, said, um, you know, there are some people that we're not honestly praying to be blessed. Right. And so there, there are some things like that that God just, he just, in his timing, when we're ready for it, he gives us a word, could be even through this podcast, could be through a message that you or I preach or someone else, and God speaks to us, and there's a little nugget like that, that if Ooh. we'll obey that little nugget, then God can take us to the next step. Oh, that is unbelievable. And I would be very upset if the guest minister said a word that was so for me and not for the church as well. <laughs> are you trying to get healthy? I mean, come on, guys. We're all trying to get healthy. We're leaders. Leaders are readers. Leaders are, we're healthy. We're definitely not trying to be lazy. We're not trying to be out of shape. We're not trying to be, you know, just, you know, I think you got to, I mean, if you're going to be a leader, you got to be healthy. That's why, that's right, this is an ad. And you are going to hear about our great partners, AG1. Not AG3, not AG5, no, AG1, AG1, two three into the fall. AG1 is at the door. That's right. And if you want to take ownership of your health, you need to try. I'm telling you guys, try this stuff. People swear by it. AG1. And you're going to get a free year supply of vitamin D and five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. If you go to drinkag.com backslash LLI. What does LLI stand for? Leadership Lean In. Go to drinkag1.com L backslash LLI and check it out. I, I'm an AG1 guy. You guys know this about me. I'm a big AG1-er, uh, formerly known as the guy that was AG5-er. I got out of that five business. I went to the one business. It's greens powder. It's nutritional supplements. It's getting you all the vitamin D that you need. It's boosting your immunity. It's doing all the things. It's doing all the things. You got to check it out. We're leaders. We got to be healthy. I I, I want to I want to ask you about finding purpose, because I think that you know that's so much about this. Is it does start with the dream. How do I how do I find that dream? Where does that dream get downloaded? Um, there's so many people. Really, I think this is what most people are looking for. Is you know that's why purpose driven life sold so well and continues to sell. Is help me find my purpose where, where do you what are some practical steps i could take as a leader to, to to find that yeah well one i just outlined was the next step and that is whatever god speaks to you you have to obey it at the time mm. and um and so when i when in the book i'm kind of given uh you know kind of taken to the end and revealing a little bit so i'm not going to reveal too much but we uh if you remember if you think about it joseph's dream really didn't have anything to do with his destiny. It was just the direction that God put him in. And when he was faithful along the way, then he fulfilled God's destiny. And so many times we want to know, what specifically am I going to do for God? Wow. Instead of, am I going to obey Jesus today? Am I going to do the, the normal stuff, the regular things? Am I going to really work on my personal relationship with Jesus? Am I going to stay in prayer? Am I going to read the Bible and get to know the Bible? There's not one person I know that's been used greatly by God that doesn't know the Word. I mean, right. if people get in the Word, oh. they fulfill their destiny. That's so right. there are things like that. And, and, and so many times we want to know, well, what specifically am I going to do? Right. And I really think it's about heading in the right direction That's instead great. of asking God every day, what specifically am I going to do? That's so good. I love that. Just, yeah, set me off in the right direction and the rest will take care of itself. I, I want to talk a little bit about, yeah. you know, because when we're, we're talking, especially to this age demographic, 18 to 29, or people trying to discover their destiny, it's a big deal. Um, one of the keys I, 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 I think that we need to address is discerning what's God and what's me. You know, the age old joke has always been like, what's, what's God versus the pizza. I always grew up in church where the guy was referring back to the pizza he ate last night. 
I've I in every generation yeah. this is it, we haven't moved past this joke. It's still the pizza I ate last night. How do I know if it's God? What are some signs that will be obvious to know it's God's dream, not mine? Yeah, you know, um, uh, there's a great scripture that I use in the book on the prophecy test. As you said, it sounds like a lot of prophecies came from the pizza last night. You didn't <laughs> use the word prophecy, but you said what the guy was saying, and that's kind of what I was thinking, you know. Um, but it says until um, uh, until Joseph's word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. And until Joseph's word came to pass, the word of the Lord tests him. In other words, until his dream came to pass. But that wow. first uh, Hebrew word for word is about prophecy. Until mm. Joseph's prophecy over his life came to pass, the second is the one that's used only for Scripture. Wow. The word of the Lord. Until his prophetic vision came to pass, the Scripture tested him. Mm. And we just talked about that a little bit. But that is the thing that has kept you grounded through all the things you've, you've had in California, in Los Angeles. You know, I, I've, I, I jokingly, so if this is not a joke, please forgive me, but I refer to sometimes California as the Socialist Republic of, of California, you know. I mean, you, you guys have gone through so much difficulty out there, churches yeah. being shut down. You know, Hollywood thinking we're going to lead the world in this new direction. They've yeah. thought that for years. And yet you have gone and you've been such a light in a dark place. So, but the same thing has happened is because I've heard you, it's the word. You preach the word, you stay on the word, you teach people the word. In the same way when you were talking about me at the beginning, uh, we just stay in the word. And, That's and, it. and it's not just for preachers. I mean, no. the whole reason we stay in the Word is so that our congregation will stay in the Word. That's so exactly until right. Joseph's dream, until his dream, his Word came to pass, the Word of the Lord, the Scriptures, tested him. Oh, my gosh. What a brick. I mean, that right there. And, and it, it, it really is. It is the Word, too. It, I mean, we just we build our whole lives on it. And, you know, I never in, appreciate pastors, leaders that are the starving bakers. I don't like people that <laughs> deliver yeah. it and they don't yeah. chew it. I, do, I just don't, I yeah. drink the Kool-Aid, I sell the Kool-Aid. I'm a user. I'm not just a seller. I'm a, I yeah. read this in my read through that we do, you know, we, we're in Ezekiel and Revelation. So today, you know, and right now it's kind of, you know, wow. you got to be really good to get some yeah. out of Ezekiel and <laughs> Revelation. Yeah. So so I go over to my proverb yeah. of the day, it, thankfully, every day as well. And so Proverbs 5. But I got some today in Proverbs 5. The last three scriptures in Proverbs 5, I'm telling you, it's as good. And it's not for Sunday. It's not for, yeah. it's not for you know, something I'm using on a podcast. It's for, and it's, the, it's, the, it's a word that's testing me. God was speaking to me. And I think that's so important is to continue to stay rooted and grounded. I couldn't agree more. No one has been used by God that wasn't grounded and rooted in the word of God. And uh, I, think it's a, I think it's a big deal. And it, you, in, in, in a city like Los Angeles, the, why I like this book so much is we are filled with dreamers. And L.A., and there's a lot of young, young listeners on this podcast that you're speaking to today. Uh, L.A. and young people, it's so interesting. L.A. is also known as the city of broken dreams. You know, I moved from Pennsylvania. I moved from Ohio, and I came out to be an artist, and now I'm a sandwich artist at Subway. This is not what hmm. I thought was going to happen. Hmm. Talk to me about, you know, because you look at Joseph in the pit, in Potiphar's, yeah. in the prison cell, in Fair. Yeah. It's a series of broken dreams. How do I keep my eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher, when I'm dealing with so much broken dreams around me? Yeah. Yeah. You know what is amazing is that through all of that, it says that he noticed, he noticed that the butler and the baker were sad. Now think about that. He's in prison and he noticed that two other people were going through something 
and he asked them about it. Mm. And that's when they told him their dreams, he interpreted their dreams, and then here's the amazing thing, uh, they go back and he says, now remember me, remember me, you know, when Pharaoh asked you, I kind of feel like God said to him, oh, you're trying to manipulate two more years, <laughs> two more years, Joseph. You're, you're, you're not ready yet. That, that last part where you said, remember me, you're, you're, you're trusting them, you're trusting someone else for your dream to come to pass. And so, and it, then it says, at the right, at the set time, at the mm. set time, then the butler remembered. And he said, oh, wait a minute. There's a guy in prison that interpreted my dream. Maybe he can interpret your dream, Pharaoh. And he goes from being in the prison to the most powerful, other than mm. Pharaoh, the second man, the most powerful man, because it was all under his control. He only had one man above him to the second most powerful man in the world because he remained faithful Dear even God. when other people did him wrong, even Dear when God. other people didn't remember him, didn't keep their promises, lied about him, he remained faithful. And just think about this, he wakes up in the prison one day, he wakes up in the palace the next. That's how quickly God can put you in your destiny. That's right. David on the backside of the desert taking care of sheep and lambs and boom, just like that. I, I, I love that yeah. so much. It, recently, uh, we were with, I don't know if you've gotten a chance to be with uh, this prophet. His name is Jim LaFoon. Do you, do you know that name? Mm -hmm. I do. So, I do. So, I know Jim. So, Jim, so, so Jim was, uh, we were with Pastor Chris Hodges. And anyways, Jim LaFoon, he, he prophesied over me. Now, you got to understand, Pastor Robert, I'm a pastor's kid. So I still get scared around prophets. I still want to run. Yeah, sure. If a, pro if a prophet's sure. in the room, I, I do not want to be in the room. So the prophet started yeah. to prophesy, and I'm, so I'm a little nervous. But he said something that really, you know, every once in a while, God will, God will let you know that he's noticing. So the prophet says, yeah. he says, um, because you have not asked for things and reached for things, God is going to bless you. And I thought to myself, oh, thank God that, because I really don't want to, I want to preach there, or I want to meet them, or I want to get this, and I'm asking for that. I just think God is so sovereign, so I've never wanted to touch any That's of right. that. I just really That's believe right. that in, in what you're saying. How have you had to stay patient in your life, in your ministry? And to me, it's a trust issue. It's, it's it such, is. it's just going like, I don't want to be, if God wants me there, he'll take me there. How have you had to do yeah. that in your, in your life, in your, your ministry? Yeah, and this is going to, my answer is going to sound extremely simple. And that is exactly what you said just a moment ago. You got in the presence of God today with his word, not because you're a preacher, but because you're a Christian, and God spoke into your life something for you. So my answer is extremely simple, and that is the way I've stayed grounded, the way I've stayed away. I've had those same thoughts, this church, that book, this TV, whatever. I have these dreams I want to do for God, but the way that I've stayed grounded is I walk into the presence of God every morning and God says to me, Robert, stop thinking that way. Stop getting your mind out there. Get your mind off that. And here's, here's what the Lord gave me this definition a long time ago. The definition of success. How do you define success? Mm. The definition is of success in one word, obedience. Wow. Because is the guy who pastors 20,000 more successful than the guy who pastors 200? What if God called him to that town and he's faithful for 40 years with a small church? That's success. That's So exactly we right. have to define success. But that, that happens for me in that room when there's nobody there except me and the King of Kings. Wow. That's how I've stayed grounded. That's amazing. Well, thank God. Thank you. Thank you for your continual yes. Thank you again. I know I mentioned it, but thank you for being an example. I know you're aware of this. More people are watching you than you probably realize. I'm one of them. And uh, that's why I acknowledged, uh, you know, you look young, you look happy, you look just, you, I'm just so, so happy for you, for you and I always honor you because, you know, Pastor Jack, I grew up 
uh, in Foursquare, and Pastor Jack was our guy. So the way I watched the way that you really took care of him and honored his legacy, and so I'm forever loyal and faithful to you. So just thank you for this book. Thank you for the life that you've lived. I can't wait to read it. And uh, can't wait for every listener to, to pick up a copy as well. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me, Chad. And I, I want you to know I love you very much. And I am so grateful for how God has used you. Uh, and yet I'm also grateful for the same thing. You have stayed grounded. And you've had a lot of opportunity to let things go to your head. And I am so uh, just, just, just so blessed that you walk into that room every day and you meet with the King of Kings right. and you've stayed grounded. And I just want you to know that you haven't, obviously, you know, you haven't fulfilled your destiny. You're in your destiny, but man, there, there's a whole lot more out there, a lot more people for you to reach. But every listener, every listener has a dream from God and a destiny that's from God, actually from God. And that's as right. long as we stay faithful and pass these character tests, we can all fulfill that destiny. It's amazing, amazing. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations again, and hope to see you soon. See you soon too, Chad, thanks. Mm -hmm.